Hey guys, I just wanted to try to help everybody out with this I2M dash. A lot of guys don't know how to pull data off it, put it on a computer, and then get information. Some people can get it on the computer and then they can kind of not know how to work with it. So we're gonna figure that out right now. We got the dash, we're gonna fire it up, and you gotta use a USB, okay? And the dash is gonna warm up, all right? Literally, it's like a computer. Now that it's warmed up, GPS signal is there, everything's there, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB. That's in this little port down here on the side. You guys, if you have a dash, you know where it is. So I have the button pod, so I have the up and down buttons here. So there's dash buttons right here on the side that you guys, so we're gonna press down, short press, and that's gonna bring up the, so you have a couple different ways. You have the chronometer, and you have the data and video acquisition. So we're gonna go with the chronometer, so long press chronometer, and you can view lap times with a long press. No circuit selected, so you have to go down and select a circuit. So I'm gonna go down here and select Little Talladega because I know I have data. So long press, Little Talladega is loaded, press the up button or press and hold the up button. Long press on view lap times and you can see all these lap times with the different splits that are all in there, okay? So that's how you can view it if you're sitting at the track and you wanna know different split times and that type of thing. It'll tell you your best time and your ideal time. You can see down there at the bottom. We're gonna back out of that. So we're gonna long press up. We're gonna long press the up button again to back out to get to the menu. And we're gonna go down, short pressing the down button to data and video acquisition. Long press. And you can see recording and all the different ways of getting information. And you got the download tab all the way at the bottom. Long press on the download, and you're gonna see all the data that's on the dash at this point. Now I've deleted everything else off except for this last day. So I'm gonna press the down button short press, and it's gonna get you to select one of these. If there was more, you could long press, and it would go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. But down here at the bottom, it says download, delete, delete all, and or download all and delete all. By long press, it's gonna access those tabs. So I'm gonna long press again, and that gives me a downloaded of that session, okay? So now, the data, is on the memory stick. Now what I do is I wait for the red light to go off on the dash because it's all powering down and I'm just kind of concerned about the USB getting all the information. So that has all the data on this memory drive now. I'm gonna go down to the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to get off of this stick and onto the computer and how to set up your Dana software to actually be able to use this information. First of all, when you guys are looking at Danis and your Danis software, let's let's get it to where we can actually open it. Here we go. The Danis shortcut, okay? Like my screensaver, yeah. All right, Danis shortcut, Danis analysis software pro. It's gonna open up, it's gonna look like this, okay? There's gonna be nothing in it. First thing you're gonna do is you are going to want to actually put in some information, right? So you need to get some, some laps, some data in there. Now I'm right clicking here and you can see what comes up visualization channels and stuff like that. Uh, if I left click, you can see this little red line comes up. We're not worried about that. We are going to file and open. That's one way to do it. You can go to open right here and you can see it's already got me looking at some data. Now I've got this stuffed away in some of my, my files here. But anyway, I'm going to go to the date in question, which is right here. So I'm going to open up that. This guy is what pops up. It's on my other screen. So you can see here, elapsed time it's not really kind of anything right but i can tell through distance traveled and kilometers that this is a session this is a long session right here okay now the reason why that is is because i have splits set up on my dash that's a whole nother ball of wax to get into i don't want to talk about it right now we are just going to get into actually opening up and seeing some information so i selected that and you can see a whole bunch of squiggly lines just showed up right and there's a little track map down at the bottom but that doesn't show us laps you're right it doesn't show us laps so let's move this guy out of the way. Actually, if we just come over here and hit, not that, session viewer goes away. Um, we're gonna select the finish line and we're gonna set the finish line, which is roughly right here. Now I know Talladega, it's right before you turn in for the turn one, so it's gonna be right about there. And as soon as I set that, all of a sudden you can see lap times appeared. Now look at that, a bunch of slow crap, right? So it wasn't the right session. So we're gonna open up the session viewer again, not that one, this one open it up and you still don't see the elapsed time here is good but you do see a best all right so right there this is my fastest lap of that day so i'm gonna get rid of this thing put that down our fastest session 
excuse me, not fastest lap, but the fastest lap of that day was in that session. Then, uh, so that's under sessions, right? Okay, but you still see a bunch of like laps in here. You know, like what in the world, right? Okay, so if we come in here and select laps, we hit that, we got this thing going on, but we still have all this stuff, right? All right, well, that's, that's inconvenient. So let's get rid of this thing. And we're gonna go to graph. And down here, you're gonna see where it says laps versus session. So if we go to lap, you can see all of a sudden I have what looks like one lap. That's because it is, it's one lap. Now, one thing I do have to do is change the color on this thing because it's really dull and you can't really see it. So we'll come back up here to our little sessions and laps table and you can see the color there. I'm gonna make it red, okay? So it really pops. All right, get rid of this thing. Cool. So what I have here is actually something that I set up automatically. Now you guys don't have that. What you are going to see is this. You're going to see nothing because you don't have um, these little Modo 2 or just actually Modo uh, presets in here. So I preset this to have GPS speed, throttle position sensor, and number two analog, which is actually my front brake. So we're going to get rid of that because you guys don't have that. You're going to come over here and you're going to right click under the black map. You're going to see visualization channels. And the first thing you can hit is GPS speed. Boom. Now you have a lap and GPS speed sitting in front of you. You can start making some interesting observations. Another way you can get into that visualization channels is right up here, this little box deal. It pops up on my other screen, of course. Uh, let's shorten it up so you can kind of see everything. So this little little box of, of cool stuff, right? So it's got all these things in here. These are all the little CAN bus uh, pieces of information that it's pulling off of the, the bike, right? So what we want to do is actually pull off uh, GPS speed, that's good. We don't want to pull off throttle position. There's a reason for that because you have an electronic throttle. If your bike does not have an electronic throttle, it probably doesn't even read properly for this. You, you actually set up a manual one. So I'm going to pretend like if you did that, you know what you're doing anyway. So I'm not going to speak to you, those people who have that. But if you're, <laughs> if you're like me, you've got a bike uh, that has an electronic throttle, there's actually two signals that you need to be aware of. One is actually coming off of the engine, what the actual throttles are doing. That is the throttle position sensor, okay? The APS, so you see right here, TPS, right? The APS is the actuator position sensor, okay? That is the grip throttle. That is what you are doing. And I think that's more important. Now there's some ways to go in and actually look at TPS and see if they match because they, they're not really gonna match because your actuator should be above, and you can see it right here on the actual uh, graph that the actuator is above the, the TPS, okay? Here we go. So the actuator is putting in what it's putting in. I'm gonna double click and it gives me, you know, 63% right here and it's giving me 50% there. That's a normal thing with an electronic throttle bike, okay? So don't read into that too much. By the way, you saw I just zoomed into the map. I come up here, this little expander, little box deal. Boom, it re-expands it out into everything. Now I know it's a bunch of squiggly lines and like what in the world can you do with that? I have no idea. Cool, there's these three boxes up here. One of them is this full graph, as you see it. The second one is a dual graph. I have yet to figure out how to put another set of information on the bottom. Once I figure that out, I'll let you guys know. But we are gonna set it up for split graphs. This is one I use the most. This is one you saw originally when I had my GPS, TPS, and front brake. Now you notice TPS in there is incorrect because I hit TPS and not APS. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna get rid of TPS on this. We're just gonna look at the GPS and throttle, okay? So as we go along the track, you can see there's, there's ups and downs and there's speed and that type of thing. Now, if you wanna actually know what's happening, I'm gonna move that off my screen. At a particular point, you can move it along like this and like I double clicked on this map and these little numbers will pop up and you can see it, there's 80% versus zero, or sorry, 80 miles an hour versus 0% throttle, right? But if you don't wanna do that, and you just wanna kinda of compare things, I'm gonna put it right here, and I'm gonna look right over here, GPS speed and actuator throttle. Now that'll move, watch this over here, okay? As I move along, those move, all right? Actually tells you also what time frame you're looking at. So this uh, happens to be, let's find out where it is on the map. If I select this little guy right here, it tells your position on the map, and that's a good little indicator of where things are, right? Okay, that's uh, that's one basic way to set this up. I don't wanna get too detailed into it, but that you should be setting up these presets, okay? That way when you load it in and you select a lap, it just populates and there you go and you're all set. Now guys, if you wanna actually set up presets, okay, I've got my Modo, Modo 2, okay, Mode, I think is what they're referring to, it's Italian, all right? 
Um, remember, we had this. This is the actual preset. I want to make a preset. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm going to go in here to Modo 2, and I'm going to select some visualization channels by hitting my fancy little button over here. Not that. What in the world just happened? All right, we're back. Remember uh, this little button right here? That selects your channels. Your channels will be mostly the same, by and large the same. Um, if you notice in here, I have number two analog is because number one analog is being taken up by something else. And your the manual will tell you that. When you look under your bike, under the, the, um, the I2M, you know, in fact, let's go there. Download. And then Dana Software. By the way, you guys should pay attention to this because there's a bunch of stuff in here. They have updates on. Like, look, list of updates. Last updated, 2624. I haven't updated that, so I should probably get that at some point. And then default circuits and some other things, whatever. Right. So constantly be looking at this when you when you do have time. But we're going to go to the uh, plug and play kit manual. That's important. Okay, right here, plug and play kit manual. Now this is for the Chrome light the pro and the plus okay they have the plus two and the pro two i have the chrome right now on my bmw and i have the plus two on my zx6r i'm going to switch those eventually once i get the proper um accessory harness from i2m so you can see here plug and play kit chrome all right it actually does show all of them for some weird reason but we're going to scroll down to this pages where you can see like you know all the different bikes right so if you go to, well, let's find it, my BMW, okay, is a 15 to 18, now it's the Italian uh, section, here's the English section, page 166, so we're going to type in 166, boom, here we are. So it's going to tell you a bunch of different things about your bike specifically. Uh, I'm not going to get into the, what the BMW needs to run this system, but it's in there. It tells you what your alarms are, which one does what. Um, and then more importantly, come down here. These are the things that you're actually going to look into the Dana software and know that it's already being used. Like analog one, it's not there because it's already being used for throttle position sensor. Analog seven is being used for APS, which is gas position, which is what we talked about. Then analog eight is traction control. But that's something that when you have your bike and you're looking at, why don't I see analog one? That's why. Okay, let's get out of that. So what we're trying to do is set up one of these things so it just pulls immediately what we're trying to look at. So GPS speed, very important. Actuator position sensor, lean angle or just angle, okay? Angle is based off the IMU and that's gonna have your, your lean angle in it so you can tell what's going on when. And I don't wanna clutter it up too much but that's pretty good, right? So we're gonna have that. All right, let's put this away. So now I have all these things here. I don't wanna see it all jammed up like that over one lap. I wanna see it split out. So I split it out like this. Now I can actually go, okay, this makes more sense now, right? Um, sorry, I'm right-clicking when I shouldn't be. So anyway, there's all that that's happening in there. And what we can do now is save, save current mode. So it's Modo 2, Modo 2. And what I'm going to do is backspace. And I'm going to call it what it is, right? So GPS and then backslash APS backslash angle and now i'm going to save that boom so now whenever i pull up that lap and i want to quickly go to something else i go to like that boom gps angle and, and actuator position so i can see how much throttle i'm giving it where i'm giving it right okay so that is basically it guys so if you want to compare a lap you need to open up your sessions table again and like i've got two laps sitting here that are almost identical so i'm going to go ahead and select the second one and what you're going to see is two sets of same colored lines now obviously that's a problem because right now we have a set where the data info is calling the APS this color doesn't matter how many laps you put in there it's gonna be the same color so it's like crap man alright so you can see here we have same color right that's a problem same color means we don't understand which lap is which right because this one is purple and this one's purple now it's purple that's jacking us up right so we're going to options Auto change colors with more than one lap. You select that and it gives you two different colors. Now it's these two different colors. So if I go back to my table and I go to the laps, you can see this color and that color. And I want to change them. I hit the color. One's red. That's cool. I don't mind it. The other one we're going to make blue, right? Contrast. What we want. 
cool now we can see all that if you guys like it and you you appreciate this type of content please like please comment tell me what else you would like to see tell me what else you'd like to me to explore i'd love to figure this out with you guys and try to figure it out so we as a community community can start using i2m dashes in a better way here in america because they're awesome and if you guys want an i2m dash or any accessories i happen to be a dealer my name is aaron dearborn and i am the owner of full gas products and our website fullgasproducts.com we have all kinds of different stuff on there it's updating weekly with different items <laughs> so much so much information out there um, but if you want to get i2m dash uh, if you want to get a, a recommendation on where to start if you want to get accessories or anything like that let me know i can get that for you i'll try to get you a discount if you guys see this here on youtube and you want to get a discount from me on the website or just email me and we can talk about it but i'll give you 10 percent off of the i2m products that i can get okay so it's gonna be i2m 10 that's the code right there at www.fullgasproducts.com thanks guys we'll see you later